Let's, let's get started. You're all welcome. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, everyone. You're welcome. So, I'm going to get started. I'm just trying to go. I'm just going to get started. What else we join later? So, today I'm going to do a recap of, or not basically not all, but the one we talked about last class, the function, the axe function. So, then after that, we ask questions. So, it's basically recapping the axe function. From the beginning, from the last one, the one we talked last week. Okay, so I'm going to open my PowerPoint. I'm going to share. Come in. Okay, so let me show my screen. Okay, so can we all see my screen? Can we all see my screen? Let's yeah, separate the car. So, near my data, Calypsos, I'm going to be using.
Wieso war ich da? Das ist Leute. Okay, so I'm going to start with the, the year, the day, and the month functions. Okay. Going to the other ones. So the first one is the, the, the month. So the month function is basically used to get a uh, month of like from your data, from a date of the data you have. For example, for example, like this is our date purchased here. Yeah? Wanna get the wanna extract extract, wanna extract the month from this this in what now. So the other way I was doing it that day, is that the same way I did it in the video? I don't know, some, one man said it works for him. But the other way, if it's not working for your own day, the other thing you can do is just to, instead of using the month function, you just use the format function alone. So, you know, the month function goes like this, it puts month. So I'm gonna put month number, because this is what, the month is gonna give me number. So month number, if I use the month function, if I use, use the month function, I'm putting the dates. And this is apocalypse sales date purchased. Okay. So I'm this. So you see, it gives me one, yeah, two, yeah. And three. So for this, is you know, it's January, February, March. But if I'm using number for my, um, so this is I was showing that if I'm using number for my format, it's going to be using this. You're going to touch this one as December instead of instead of the normal um, January that it meant to be. So all you can do is, why right, if I want to use the uh, format function, so I'm going to change this to. I'm going to change this. Okay, let me just leave this here. I'm create another color. For the month name. So, so, I, so I'll put month name here, so I can get the name of the month instead of the number. So month name. So instead of using that, uh, selecting this, what we are going to do is so just the formats, then just select the date directly. This is our date purchased. You just select it here. So I'll say the date I'm using, the value I'm using is date purchased. So I'll say apocalypse sales date which is in fact it's good. Apocalypse sales date purchased. And then put my comma. So selecting this my data I have is so apocalypse sales date purchased. This is, this is in this column and this is the date purchase here. Now I'll put in the format I want for it. Put months, but I want to get the month, the month name. So put in top three M's. Remember that's the in format. Three M's will give you the months. The short that's the short short uh, in short form. So four M's will give you in full form. So I'm gonna put it three. Okay, let me put it four. Uh, give me two. So put my brackets here and press enter. So you can see now uh, it's giving me um the January now. No, no, because now what it's doing in this day is just going there to extract it. It's not using number yet. So this one is using number and that number. Format passes the number as um this December as number one, then January as number two. So that's why we're having that error that day. So but if you use the date purchase, it's just gonna extract that month from here. It's not the month is already should be showing, it's just gonna extract it and put it in that new column for you. So the same thing with day, if you want to do day, you just change this to um D D, D in four places. D in four places and enter. So you can see, I can also get my day from there too. So I have Saturday, Sunday. So it's just extracting the days I have here and putting anything here for me using the format. So, um, so I can do that for that. Then, uh, okay, before I move on, do you understand this part? The format part? That's basically what we're going to talk about today. Do you understand the format? If 
All right, move on to um the next one. Okay. Simpler. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. Then the next one we talked about yeah, that day was weekday. Weekday also gives you weekday. Normally, the way you get it is, yeah, that's just the sense it's going to give. But it gives you a number. So you can just use. So week, weekday, don't, you don't actually, unless you want to get the number, maybe you want to use it for a particular formula. You just want to get the number of the days. The number, or you want to assign Monday as two or Monday as this. But no, want, that's why you need to use weekday. But if, just, if you just want to get like what I just did here, you can just use this one I just used here. So the weekday, I'm going to move to that. So next, I want to get the weekday. I'm going to use the weekday function. I'm going to combine it with, I'm going to combine with formats. The format so that I can get, instead of numbers, I'm going to get it in normal. Just, so um, I'm going to type weekday here. Yeah. So I'm going to do the, the first one. So I say weekday. I'm putting the dates, putting the dates, which is going to be apocalypse sales, date purchased, and my comma. Then the return type, return type is going to, remember, I talked about the return type. The one is for you to start from Sunday, the two is shifts down to Monday. If you go to today, it shifts down to Tuesday. So Tuesday will be the first one is going to call, like Tuesday is going to be what is going to start from there. Your week is starting from. So it's just basically where your week is starting from. So if you're starting from Sunday, you put it at one. If you're starting from Monday, you put it at two. If you're starting from Tuesday, it should be three. So if I put one here and close my bracket and enter, I will get from seven because Saturday, if you're starting from Sunday, it's starting from one. Saturday is going to be seven. So I get seven for Saturday, one for Sunday, two for Monday. So now I can use my formats in behind the function, I can put formats. Then here, yeah, put comma, then put the format I want it to be in. It's gonna it's gonna be my triple D and then close brackets and enter. So I'll get that in full now. You can see I've got in my I've got in my function in full. So that's the weekday. I feel like that one will be on oh, on that day. I just wanted to also repeat it again. If anybody does not understand, you should just raise the concern on that. Say you don't understand. If you feel like everybody should understand. Is there anybody that doesn't understand? The weekday. Okay, so I'm just going to move on. That's the weekday. Then, Talk about if. So I talked about the if. So the if we can use the if to do many things. Not just this. You know, I showed you nested if that day, and I showed you normal if. Normal if, if, normal if where you use just one criteria, not using more than one. So we have a nested if there too. If you want to, I'm going to talk about it. So the if, let's say, want to say if the this is equals to a particular number. It should, should tell us weekend if it's a particular because the particular number should tell us um working day. So I'm going to change this back to number so that I can be able to use that. So put it back to number. So I can also do the if on, on top of this. I have here, but I can also place it another distance. So I'm going to just use. This can you check the month name? The month name. Oh, okay. Is I changed it back to I changed it to Saturday. I'll change it back to this. So let me change it back to um M M M. So it will go give us the month. I just changed it to D D. That's why it's showing um the day. So we'll change the format back to M M M to give us the month name. So. Okay, so um, then as I was saying, so I can actually use this 
I just put my formula here, my if if function. So I say if this function, this thing we did here is equals to, I uh, say I say greater than. Okay, it's greater than one. Okay, I think let me just do it. I can do it this way, but I just want to because I want to be selecting this multiple time. Selecting so this next kind of thing. Okay, let me just do it in another color. So I can say, um, weekend and working day. Weekend and working day. That's what I want to get. So I'll put in my function, which is my if. So if logic is going to be um, if it's going to be apocalypse weekend column, weekend, yeah, week, weekday column is. So if apocalypse sales weekday column is is lesser than two comma if it's lesser than two which is one which is one which is going to be like sunday it should be give us weekend weekend And comma. Then I, I can use multiple if so if that's my next idea. Weekend again. And I'm not if can function. Ellipsis weekend. Okay. Is um greater than greater than six is Saturday is seven, six is uh, Friday. I say greater than six. I want my weekend to be Saturday and Sunday. Where than six and then comma put in else a uh, result if true is going to be weekend again weekend else to be that's result result if false to be working day working day Working day, then uh, close my brackets. Close it twice because I opened it twice. So it close the bracket twice because you opened the if twice. Same way doing Excel. So I get my weekend for Saturday. Um, weekend for Saturday. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Sunday, weekend, working day, working day, uh, working day, weekend. So let me create the day function too. So, so I'm going to bring this back to this side. It's a new column. I want the day. Then formats, then apocalypse. Um, those words that I enter. I understand this study, but kindly illustrate some using same using only if function. Okay. The reason I'm using nested if is you know that my uh, what's it called? My text. I'm using not week as Saturday, Sunday is one and Saturday is seven. Yeah, uh, Saturday is seven. So if I want to do that, I can say Sunday is lesser than um 
I'm sorry. If I want to do the what's it called? The if only. So I'm gonna just use if okay. I just put it any name. Let's give it any name so I show you how to use more if same way you did your own. Let's say if then your logic. What's the logic you want to pass in? If uh the if apocalypse is um day for day colon, actually for day colon is equals to let me use sat today. Sat sat comma comma yeah result if true will be would be this is sad sad today this is this is sad today else so the result if for so if now the same thing as you know the method if we are just going to put another if but because we don't want to do another thing just put our uh, else which is result if first. The result if first would be let's put not sat today. Not sat today. Not sat today. So Sat or day sat. Oh. This is Saturday, not Saturday, not Saturday. So you can see that's basically I use the if the if function. So Mr. Favor. Mr. Favor. Do you understand that? Is this still here with us? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I, I, I actually understood that. Mm. But I, I, I thought it would be possible for the Use the function demonstrate the weekends and and also the work days. Okay, if you uh, just put, you just put the comma and put the next one. Can you hear me? If you want to use it for the same thing we did, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Your device is breaking. If you want to do the same thing we did, just put. Come on, put yes, I'm, I'm hearing you. I can hear you. I, I can hear you. So I said, if, if it's the same thing want that we did, that you're trying to do, you can just put it to text there. Okay. Um, can we yes. can we now uh, can we now define uh, uh, yes for that place should be weekend mm, that's not true. weekend okay sorry then comma uh, or, or else it should be one day yes one day or else, or else it should be one day I think working day.
We use num by minus. I think we have to be using uh, uh, as a uh, nested div function because if you put a comma, it just moves you to uh, the next to put in your result if true or result if false. And if you put in and to be this, and should be not should not be. Oh. I think you one and seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try one and seven and see. And it's not about the number, it's actually about the sign. So you're saying I'm comparing to normal, so it's still the same thing if you put seven. That's it. So you can see. Okay. So it works. So I just used, instead of using the and, can you hear me? But all of them now are now weekend. It's still the same, it's not. I think you just need to use the distance. So this is all, but it's still giving me weekend. So I think you need to use nested if. Okay. Okay, let's continue. So this is all. I was using and before. So and will just compare, but I use it all now. So it's one, is it, this has to be equal to one or this. So give me weekend else if you give me working but it's not working just give me weekend weekend weekend yeah. okay okay let's continue yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's if. So the same way you can use this for any other thing you want to do, like knowing a particular product. Let me use it for another. So I can also use if for measure too, not just for color. I use it for measure. You just need to know what you want to use it for in measure. So let's say I want to say, I want to get the total unit sold first because I need to get an aggregate of anything I want to do. So let's say in this column I have here, I want to know the um, customer that sold uh, um, I want to, okay, let me think. So I want to get the total unit sold. And I want to know the customer that I want to bring out the customer, any customer that sold highest. Let's say start. First of all, let me do the total units so with my uh measure. So I need to always aggregate. Okay, let's say I want to do something like this. I want to say um 
I want to know if you made made up to if you made up to like uh um up to sold up to like three thousand. If if it is, you need to, uh, you need to sold it up to like three thousand. You should give us yes. If not, you should give us no. So I'm gonna put. We're gonna put any text for now. Okay, let's say if units. Oh, sorry, units sold within a three thousand. Data. Well, uh, let me just use this for now. I know the text is not like explaining it better, but I just want to use this text. So I'll say some, I'll just sum the total unit sold first, and I'll use my go to uh Calib sales and go to uh, uh unit sold total unit sold. I'm gonna get total unit sold. <laughs> So the unit sold is this. So now let's say I want to if I want to say if is up to this give us yes, else no. So I'll say I'll use my if if no more where I use so this is my logic here. This is my sum is the logic. Then is so if the sum of this is greater than three thousand, I'll say greater than four thousand. Greater than four thousand, comma. She give us the answer. Should be answer if true. She give us yes. Yes. She give us no. Sorry, put your put sign first. No. So close the bracket and enter. So I can use my card visual now to do this and bring my. So it's not greater than 4,000. So it gives us no. So you need so it's not greater than 4,000. So I can also come back there. And I said 4,000, I can say 3,000. 3, I press enter. So I did my unit. So let's see. I think the unit should be better than 3,000. So it gives us yes. So it gives us yes. So you can use if for something like this, to find out something like this. And more, there are other things you can use it for. Just need to depend on what you want to do with it. You can use it for that. Okay, so that's that for if in measure. You can combine it with different, different stuff, not just some. You can do count through to you use combine two functions, the if, if and count through. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so that's that. I hope everybody understands the if and nested if. Is anybody that doesn't understand? Is there anybody that does not understand? Claire, okay. Is there only Mr. Adon? Okay, please repeat, sir. Okay. Is it this one or everything? Miss Miss Bemisola. Is it just this one I just did now? Miss Bemisola. Okay, that's why I just did now, Abby. Okay, so I'm going to. Please just answer like on mute so that you, you can. Like, I want to just unmute you. Yeah, okay, you can unmute. Yeah. So do you want to just, just, just, just did now, right? Yes, uh, sir. Yes. And okay. also the one that, uh, the one that uh, you did months. You know, that, that, that you did months that we're having issues with last week. That okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. So this one is very simple. What I did is I want to use the if I do I was using it in column. I also wanted to show you that you can use it um for uh measure too. So I want to say I want to I basically want to copy this text. So I'll just I'll use this same measure I created here. So I don't need to be writing another full text. So I'll just remove everything I have here. So what I want to do is I want to 
know if my unit sold is greater than 3,000. I don't know if unit sold is greater than 3,000. So very simple. I just now put first of all sum up because for measure you have to sum up anything you want to get your answer. It gives you one answer. It gives you one number. So you have to make sure it, to be a, before you can even use the if or use the select the number. You have to make sure you sum it up. So I will sum. I put the sum of my unit sold, comma. Sorry, unit sold. So I want to sum the unit sold with this now. I just sum the unit sold first. Then now unit sold. Now I will use my if here now to find out if is actually greater than three thousand. So if it's greater than three thousand, give me. If, I would want it to put yes. If it's greater than, it should put no. So I would. What I will do is this my sum is going to be my criteria. The criteria I want to get. I will say if this sum here, this total unit sold here, is greater than greater than three thousand, comma. If it's greater than three thousand. It should give me yes. Then result if false. So result if false is going to be no. So if it's false, it should give me no. So I close my bracket. I press enter. And I can bring in my measure and my uh, card visual. And then take my the measure I just created, put it in there. So my total unit sold. Is greater than three thousand, so I get yes. So if I if I put in four thousand, there it's going to show me no because my unit sold is not greater than four thousand. Can even say equals to four thousand. Okay, let's say equals to three thousand. Let's see if it's equals to three thousand. So let's say equals to three thousand. No, fine. If it's equals to three thousand. So you can say equals to three thousand. It tells you no because it's not equals to three thousand. You can say equals to or greater than equals to or greater than. Okay, it's not greater equals to greater. It should be greater than or equals to. So greater than or equals to. If you put equals or greater, it's going to give you error. So it's be if you put uh, it should be greater than or equals to greater than could be greater than sign first, then the equals to sign second. If you want to use greater than or equals to. Press enter. If it's greater than equals to three thousand. It's going to give you yes. So it's greater than three thousand. So you can also do not equals to, which is you're using to uh, is either uh, lesser than or greater than. So it's not equals to three thousand. So it's going to give us yes. But if I put three thousand one, I think our uh, total distance is three thousand one. So if I put three thousand one, it's going to tell us no because it's equals to three thousand. And what I'm just saying is. It is, is it that is lesser than or is greater than? So if it's greater than equal a three three thousand one, it gives me yes. If it's greater than three thousand one, it gives me yes. But if it's not, if it's, if it's equal to three thousand one, it gives me no. So that's you can use that. Then for the month, I need to come back here. So to get the month, basically what I do is instead of using typing the months and then putting the date and all that, what I would do is I just use my format function. So come, just use only the format function, just put in the date I want to extract the month from. So what I'll do is here is put in the month. I'll just put month name two. Month name two. Then here I'll say format. Then I'll put in the date I want to extract the particular thing from, maybe month or day from. So the date is going to be apocalypse use date purchase. Then yeah, put in my command. Then I need to, now I need to type in the format. So the format is going to be months. I want to get the months. I put in the triple M or four. Four is to get the bigger to get the full month name. Then three is just to get the short for the short uh, form, the short format. So I'm going to after putting three out. Okay, then three. I will put in. I will close my bracket and press enter. And now you see I get the correct date. Start from January. I get next is February, then March, which is the most. We also have three months there. January, February, and March. So Miss Baby, so that you understand now. Miss Baby, so that you understand now. This sir, how do you use
quotation uh mouse okay you why do you use your mouse for the double quotation i don't use my mouse i use my keyboard Control shift gives you double quotation Ctrl, um, i said Control shift shift then go to where you see your quotation mouse. let me give you let me show you in keyboard let me show you my keyboard i'm going to show you my on screen keyboard so you can see So if you hold down shift, you can see shift here, hold down shift, then press this place. Wait, if, if, if you look at my mouse, this place is showing white. You can see that the double quotation is up there. So hold down shift, then click there, you get the double quotation, then do another one to close. So hold down, you have to hold down shift, you have to hold the shift down in your keyboard. This is normal way in your keyboard, hold down shift, then press, because I'm holding down shift now, then press this one. You get your double quotation, that's it. Do you understand that, Mr. Hey, Mr. Uh, say, Mr. Christopher? Okay. But what of it's been, Mr. Are you still here? She's still here. Do you understand, Ms. Bim Sola? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Not <laughs> the two of them again, or just one? Please unmute to unmute. Hello. Yeah, Hello, sir. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, so, um, well done, sir. I think this month on oh, I didn't have done that thing. But you understand the if, right? Uh, that if is similar to the one we did last week now. Yeah, yeah. For that similar. weekend that we uh, work the right. Yes, yeah, uh, I, I, I think I'm getting that. So this format. But that what I'm, this month. Yeah. Uh -huh. This format now. What I'm doing is, you know, the, normally what I was doing for is I need to go to the day. Use the day function to extract it from that to get okay. Use the month function to extract the month number first. But well, the, the month function is merely the month number. So what I can do is instead of using the month uh, function, I will just use my format directly. If I use my format, if I type um format, okay. you know? so you know format is to give me the format. It's giving instead okay. of giving, giving it me giving me the the month in numbers. It's going to give me the the main format. It's, it's either it gives me the short format, which is like gen, fair, ma, all those stuff. Then I. But if I'm using, I can also get the long format, which is the January full month name. So I guess it. So instead of putting in the, the the what's it called, the month function, I'm putting in the month date and all that. Putting in the date in the month function. What I will do is just put in the date I want to extract the month from. So the date I want to extract the month from is my date purchased. So date purchased. I'll type it. Yeah, date purchased. I'll put apocalypse sales date purchased. Apocalypse, okay. Like before that means I'll say it. So apocalypse sales date purchased is it here? Press enter on that. Put my comma. Then now I need to put in the format. So to put in the format, put double quote signs. That's why I'm gonna put in the format, the format I want to use. So if you want to get the day, if you want to get just the day, you want to extract the day, use your D. Triple D will give you the, the, the day in short form. Then 4D will give you the day in full form. But if you want to get the month, you put in triple M. So triple M will give you the, the month in short form, but if it's four, it gives you the month in full form. So if I put four now, close my bracket and enter, I'll just get you just extract the is what you just do is, is extract the month from month name from this our date that we gave to it here. This date here, because we are passed the date in here, we will say when they asked us the value one we use, which is our apocalypse sales date purchased. So when we're passing that day, what we're trying to do is we want to extract, extract our month from that date that we just passed in, passed in there. So to the format, what you're going, the format you're going to be using for that is your M. So put in M three times. It will extract the date, the month from that date that you gave to it. If you put in three M, it gives you short date, short month. If you put in four, it gives you the full month name. Do you understand it now, Mr. Don't mute yourself now, mute. Okay, are you muted? 
Tamam, tamam ya, süper. Şişt İsmi misal this speak up nasıl da kan bu var. Eh I've got it now. Okay. So you say for date for day we do DDD for month yeah. with MMM. Yes. Hello? Yeah yes yes I said. Yeah that's it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. So then one more thing I want to show you guys is you can actually put a comment in a function. So let's say I want to add something for someone to read. Read the something. I'm telling the person about the function that I just did. I could, if I press shift and enter and put my uh, forward slash three times, I can put in a quote there. It's like comments. Put in a comment. That's like this function. This function is for month formats. So I just use this to tell you, but maybe I'm sharing the, the part where I have another person I want the person to read through the this uh, and I can put in a comment like this so that the person when it goes through is it telling him what the function is actually about. So you go down shift you want to go to this new line and put in this text hold down shift and press enter Hold down shift and press enter. You go to the new line, then you put in your forward slash twice, then you can type in the comments you want to type in there. Hold up. So I understand that, right? You have to put in comments. You might need it, maybe if you are sharing, you be out with people and you want to like give them more understand about the functions you are using in the power API. Or power API in that solution is uh, I think that. So I'm going to repeat that again. If you want to go down to the next line, go down shift and press enter. Then in that next line, you can now put your forward slash twice. Then put in the, the comments or put in the text you want to add as the comments. So do you, do you understand that? That's... Is anybody not understand? Okay, I don't understand that each other. So I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna continue with the next function, which is our calculate function. So our calculate function is very, very easy to use. So the calculate function is basically if we wanna do a particular, wanna do a particular, maybe for example, wanna sum, I wanna sum that with different, different um options let's say um this one expression that okay let's say i want to sum now i want to perform a sum let's say i want to sum my total unit so i'm going to be using total unit so and then uh count through to, to do to do the the, the distance so let's say i want to get my total unit so now, I want to get the total unit so based on a particular incident. For example, when when I have when uh, if my okay, let me go back to this place. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so if I want to get the total uh, the total unit so if my if is in the month of January. So I want to get my total unit so if I'm in the, if it's in the month of January. So what I'll do is use my calculate function because in calculate function you can add in you can perform a particular. A calculation with different different filters. The filters mean different different actions that is mean, meant to happen in a particular column, not just in the column that you are in. It can be in another column. Let's say I want to get the total unit sold. That's the sum the, the option, expression I'm using. But I want to know. I want the total unit sold to go when it, it gets to it. Anyone that is counting should be equals to January. In the in the in the month in the month name column so because generally in the month name column so i'm going to use this because i already have month name yeah i'm going to delete this one i have here so 
So uh, what I can do is come here, put in my new measure. Put in my new measure. I think I have I have one measure there. I'm going to remove it. So I show you measure two. So new measure, I want to get um total units sold, total units sold in January. Now units sold in January. I will now say I use my calculate function. I can do my sum first and put in the calculate function. So but I'm going to start with okay. Let me put in the sum first. So, so I want to get this sum of the unit sold and close bracket. So, press shift down. So, with this, I'll get the total unit sold. So, I'm going to select this here. This is my this thing. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to move this in here. No, no, not this. Total unit sold. That's what I want to move it. So I have total units sold is 3,001. So let's say total units sold in the month of January. I will now use, need to add a filter. That is so I need, now you need to add a filter. So adding that filter now, because I want to get the total units sold on January only, that's where the calculate function comes in. Because I want to add a filter. The filter being, <coughs> filter being the, <coughs> the filter being the, and I want the, the, when it gets to the mo uh, the what's it called the month name, it should be equals to while doing the sum. When it gets to the month name, the month name has to be equals to January because I want to get I want to just know the total units sold in January. So I'll use my calculate function. So I calculate calculate. Then passing the expression I'm passing in. I already passed in my expression here. So put in my comma. Then they're going to ask me the first filter. My first filter is um, Apocalypse uh, month name. <clears throat> month name uh, equals to as equals to January. Equals to January and then close brackets and enter. So now I'm getting only the total units sold in January. So you see, I have the only total units sold in January. So let's say I want to get only total units sold in January and also in February. In February. January and February. So I'll put in my apocalypse sales again. That's me adding another filter. Apocalypse sales. Um <clears throat> apocalypse sales month name also be equals to um service to be equals to February. Uh, take a moment and click. Let me stay blank. So be equals to um, Using the same distance. It's going to jump. <coughs> Next filter. Thank you. 
ओके Oh, my spell. In the wise of So the text is wrong. Sorry about that. Yeah. This is not quite it. Oh. Yeah, let's check when I have a rough one. Oh, okay. So I got this. Let's try. No, I want to be done. Let me use. Sorry. Um, apocalypse. Middle state should be also such day. Now it's full of shots. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, it's shots. Okay, so, so what I did now is, so, so now I'm doing this song, if the Apocalypse sales you need sold, I'm doing the sum of this, if the Apocalypse sales month, um, month name is equal to February, comma, and also equals to Saturday, then the Apocalypse sales day column is equal to Saturday. So if this filter is correct, 
is going to add up those ones for me. All those ones that contain this particular argument, this meta in have it. So the ones that are generated is February. And in, in, in the one that's in, in the month, in the month then, we have February, and in, in the apocalypse sales day, day quorum, we have Saturday. So all those ones are going to just sum up for us. So if all it does is it comes to this place now, this is total unit sold here. So you want to the Saturday, you come here, it adds this one, then goes to Saturday and it has to be February. So this is just January, we'll go down. So where is February? February started here. February started here. So February 1st here yeah, is Tuesday, come down Saturday. So this unit is as this one, this which is 32. I'm seeing it right, which is 32. Then it comes down, goes so it has to this filter has to be met. So that's like you are giving a condition for something to be actually. So but this one, we are not giving a condition, we are not giving it a condition for it to like not, not like if. You know, for if we we give it what it's meant to pass out, if this is actually true. But this, we're trying to pass in a particular function, a particular action. But one that action to be done if, if this, if that, if a particular condition is met. So if a particular condition, which is our month name being equals to February and our um, uh, day being equals to Saturday. So if those two filters are met, it will add up anywhere those two filters were met. It will add up that one. It goes like that and goes through that particular lesson and check it. If the condition is met, it will add that one to the one he has already added for. If the condition is met, it will add it because we are using sum. So if you are using count rule two, so let's say I want to do the count rule. Let's say I'm using count of others. So count of others. Count of others in general. Count of others in general. I don't know how many others we made, made in general. How many others we made. So we say, so now instead of using our saw, we use count because we want to make, we want to count. We want to count through. We use count through, not count. Use count rule because one of count rule. Use your count rule function. Count rules function. Then put in the table, which is apocalypse sales. Then close bracket and enter. So I'm going to put in another card vision here. Then I'm going to put in that count of orders. So we have 74 orders, but we want to get the count of orders in general alone. So you select that, go back to that. So now use your calculate function to filter through, to put in the filter, which is for January alone. Calculate. Then put in your comma in front here. I'm putting your filter. So the filter is going to be apocalypse sales. And our month name has to be equals to. January. And close bracket and enter. So now we show us count of orders in January. You have 31 orders in January alone. If you want February, you change the change the uh change it to let's say March. What for March? Sorry. March. So we'll get 15. So if I want for February, I just add it. If I want to add, I want also to be, let's take another this we can use to compare. Let's say, okay, count of, uh, that the total unit sold is greater than a particular number. Let's come to my problem again. Then in that same function, come here and put in another uh, comma. I'm going to say the calypse sales. I want to know the one that the unit sold is greater than the unit sold is greater than <laughs> and
Minnesota is good at all. Twenty, good at thirty. Close bracket and enter. So I have ten. I need to match that the that the um, ten uh, ten uh, um others that the unit so that it that, that is a match and the unit so is greater than thirty. So I can also put general here. Enter. So I get nineteen for January. So. I can add in more filters. If you want to add more filters, you can see add more filters. If you put your comma, you add, add, add, add, add filter three. You can look for another filter you want to add in there and add the filter. So that you can get the particular thing you want to get. You can just create the measures and you can use it to visualize that if, if that's what it is. Like maybe they say you should count of others sold in January, count of others made in uh, February, or count of others made in uh, what's it called? March. I just do them one by one and using your filter, do them one by one and use your visuals to visualize them. So please, do you understand? Please, if you don't understand, do we understand? But people are following, are following along with me. Should be doing it to them. You have any issues there? Please, issues. okay. Please repeat, sir. Okay, Mr. Eric understands. Just is you do, Mr. Eric. I understand. The last one. Okay. Okay, it's just you see the same thing I was saying before. I'm just adding more filters. So it's still the same thing. There's no like anything different. If I'm even if I'm doing the even if I'm adding different filters, it's still just adding filters. So I can so I can add I can have like in my in a data sheet, I might have like three, three, four filters I can add to a particular to get a particular um to get a particular thing I want to get. I just add a few, a few tasks there. I don't get it. If it is February, is it going to be comma equals to 60 or uh, greater than 60 or 58? Okay, okay, let me. Let me put so this is not for this is not just for you know we are saying that, that the other is greater is greater than um 60. So the, the other is greater than 60. So if the other in general and the other is greater than 60, so if generally might be might be more if you remove this greater than 60 here. Yeah? If it's even if it's February, if you remove the, oh, sorry, I didn't remove this comma, so I should be error. So I'm gonna repeat for people that say I should repeat. I'm just someone asked the question there. So if you see this is 31 for January, you know, all the others for January is 31. If I say February. February is 28th, then March. March is 15. So uh, 31, 28, 15. That's 74. Total order is 74. 31. That's 74. So, uh, okay, so I'm going to repeat that again. So this one I'm doing here is, I'm going to start from the, please, what I said that they don't understand should be attention. I'm going to start from the first one, which is mine. So, so what I want to get here is basically I want to get the total units sold 
But I want, I want to add it with a condition. Now that that unit sale has to be, and then I want, the one I want to get is just for the ones that are equal to January. What's the count? What is the function of the count rows? So the function of the count, count rows counts the row, you, the amount of row you have in your, in your table. It table. counts the amount of row you have in your table. So what you just do is equals to count rows, then open bracket, put in your uh, the table, either apocalypse, uh, either apocalypse sales or apocalypse or uh, custom function. Put in the table and close bracket to count the, the row for you. That's what it, what it does. Okay, so as I was saying, so let's say I want to get the total units sold, but I want to get the total units sold with the uh, but the, the total units sold I want to get are just the ones for January. So if I get, but if I use my total number of total units, if I use my sum, my sum gives me the total units sold. If I say sum of the units sold, sum of the units sold, and close bracket and enter, sum of the units is going to give me the total sum, so total units sold. That is what it's going to give me now. Total units sold. So total unit sold is 3,001. But now, what I'm actually looking for is total unit sold for January. So I cannot be typing this and total unit sold this and so I get it. So what I'll, that's where the calculate function comes in now. So the calculate function helps us filter the, to, the unit sold. We need, we need total unit sold, but one of the types we don't want to show is just the ones that are equal to January in, um, in our month name. So what we're going to do now is put in our calculate function in here after this. So, so calculate function and the, the first thing I'm going to ask you is the expression. The expression is what we just passed in here, the sum of units sold. So that's the expression. Then put your comma. Then you're going to put in your filter, which is going to be, I want to get total units sold for January. So I'm going to put in apocalypse sales in my month, in my apocalypse sales month name, has to be has to be um, equals to um equals to January. So put in January here and then close bracket and enter. So close bracket, I get the total unit so for January alone. You know? So total unit so for January is 1,270. That's the unit sold for January. So if I want to add another filter, maybe I want to get total unit sold for January and also January and only on Saturdays. Total unit sold on January only on Saturdays. I want another filter now. Put my comma and say apocalypse sales. Go to the day function because that's where I can get my days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, another. Put it that. Then I put my equals to. What's that? I'm putting. Saturday, but this I use short form, which is sat, which is going to give me a short form of Saturday, which is sat. Just putting that there and put close my bracket and enter. So now it's going to give me total units sold in January for Saturday alone, which is 188 units. That's that for the song. So, Miss Bims, do you understand the first one? You know, what I say I should repeat the first, which is the song. If I move it to the country, Miss Gwemi Sola. Yes, okay. So then the count row, remember that count row counts our, a table for us. It counts the row in a table so that we can know the amount of rows we have. That's what count rows count for us. So count row counts the, the amount of rows we have. So it's not going to count this header because this is the header. If you are thinking about it, I know some people might be thinking, but it's not going to count. This count will not count because this is the header. This is an automatic header. This is just count from here for us. So the count will count the total, um, the the row uh, in a table. So let's say, and what we want to know is, we want to know the total orders we had, total order. So what we can do is come here. So I'm going to use this same, uh, for this thing I created before, same measure. So I'm going to remove everything here. So I say, I want to get total units, total orders in January. So what I want to get is total orders in January. So what I can do for you is, first of all, know the total orders we have. So total orders we have, count, use my count rules, put it in the table, which is apocalypse sales. Make close bracket for, so close bracket for me. So the total orders we have is 74. 
So, but one one when I get is total orders in January. So, all you do is come here, put in calculate. So, we use our calculate, add our filter to that, which is one to get just for January alone. So, put your comma and then apocalypse sales in here. It has to be um, in our month name, it has to be equals to. January first bracket and then enter. So we have 31 orders in January. So if you want to also notice one of those in January that was made on Saturdays, put another filter, comma. Oh, sorry. So selected. Comma. Another filter which is going to be apocalypse is the day column has to be equals to SARS. Or let's say Sunday, sun. Enter. You will get five. So total orders in on Sunday in January that was made on Sunday is just five. So we can also put in not just this. There are filters, there are plenty. You can use customer. So you can choose a particular customer. And the, let's say, I want this Uncle, um, Uncle Jonas Preps shop. So Uncle Jonas Preps shop. Come on. Let's see. Calypso, that's adding another filter now. Calypso's. Customer, then put my equals to Uncle Uncle Joe's. I think that's Uncle Joe's. Uncle Joe's prep shop. Uncle Joe's prep shop. If I got it correct. So I have two. So Uncle Joe's prep shop. Yeah, I got that correct. So I have to. So total uh, total orders from uh, in January that was made in January, and on Sunday on Sunday of January, Sundays of January, any Sunday, not just particular week, in January, and it has to be on Sunday, and it has to be coming from Uncle Jonas Prep Store, Prep Shop, Uncle Joe's Jonas, Uncle Joe's Prep Prep Shop. So that's coming from Uncle Joe's prep shop. See, I've now, I've now used three filters there. So depending on what you want, particular thing you want to get, you use the filter to get it. So after doing this now, you can just add the visuals there. So add it up. And you get that. Do you understand how this game is all It's going to be uh, do we all understand? The general does not understand. Not just the group server. If you don't understand, you can raise your hand up. Ms. Bobby Sala, do you understand? Yes, I'm getting it. Okay. The general does not understand. Okay. Okay. So that's nice. So and the function we can also use to for table. If you want to if you want to use the table uh measure, that you can click. If there's no table here, that this table is not showing here. All you just need to do is click on any one here, click on table tools, then come to new table. So this is basically we want to create a, we want to create a new table from a particular table we already have. So let's say I want to create a date table now. Let's say I want to create a date table. What I will do is use my I'm going to use my um select column. So I'm going to start from the beginning again. So I'm going to load that out. So what I'm going to do is we do have a table creator. Let me where is it? I 
as many filters as possible. Yes, as many filters as you can put, you can put it in there. You can put it, you can keep putting in filters. Depending on the amount of filters you want to uh, apply to your calculation, you can add your filters there. Okay, so uh, let me cancel this. Let me select one. Right. Oh, it's asking for them to stop power play. Okay, so let's let me so let's say I want to use the the the you know I told you we have the new measure. We have the um measure that's a new measure column and table. So that's three ways you can that's three ways you can use our DAX function. The measure, the column, and the as it called table. So if I want to use this now, I can select one, or if I can select one, or I can just click when when nothing is selected, I can click on that one I just see. But if, if I'm selected on any column, I just need to come to this uh table columns, uh, table tools, I'll see my new table, click on it. So this is to create a new table from a particular table you already have. So we want to create a date column, we want to create a date table from our apocalypse sales date or chest column. So what we'll do is Put in the table name. So the table name is going to be date. The first thing I'm going to put in there is the table name, which is date. Then here, the function you want to use. Function I want to use is my select columns. So they're going to ask me the table I want to select from Apocalypse Sales. The name I want to select is what is it called? Um, it it which chest which chest yes then comma they're gonna ask me for the expression which is gonna be calypsis this which chest again then Close bracket and enter. Okay, this is for the column name actually. Any yeah, mistake here? So this is the column name you get, which is date purchased. This is the table name. So the table name is not going to appear here because it's a table. The name, the table name appears here when you, where you see the tables. You know this is column, so this is the column name. The table name appears here. You can see the table name here, which is dates. So that's where this name you are going to. This name Mohabia is appearing in the date part. So you see, we created a new, a new table now. So this is the table we are trying to assess. I'm going to re repeat that again. So I'm going to um, delete all this. So now I want to create a date. That's not usually how you use. I want to create a date uh, table. So create a date table. Very simple. Select the one. This one. This one I want to use. Then here I will select the new table function. The new table. Write a DAX expression to create a new table. So you see this new table create using the DAX using a DAX expression to create a new table for us. So I create the, click on the new table part. Then. Click on the new table part, and then now yeah, it's gonna ask me the name of the table, which is my date table. That's the name of the table. Then the function I want to use is select column columns. Then the table I want to select from is apocalypse sales. Then the column name is gonna be date. I can put date, date is still okay. Sales date, let's use sales date instead of date purchase. Sales date, then the, the expression is going to be apocalypse sales, which is the it's going to be the column I want to bring in. 
the, the, the date column, which is apocalypse just date project. Press enter and then close brackets and press enter again. And I'll get my date. The date I had, if I change, let me change the format. Select this, change the format to long date, not, not long time. Long date actually, that's all I want to get. Ah, uh, where are you? This is just dates done. Okay, this is long date here. So long date. So I can now. So with this now I can create a full date uh, column. I can by coming here now, creating a new column to add my year. Create a new column for year. So the year I'll put in the year function. I'm putting the date, which is going to be um. In my date table, in my date table on the sales date, and then close bracket and enter. It's going to give me the year, which is 2022. I can also get the month and the day. New column. New column. So in my new column, I'll put in the. I want to get the. I want to get months, not day. Let's get months first. Months name. So remember what I did. I'm going to be getting the months name instead of month numbers. I'm going to use my format. Then the value of Apocalypse is... Uh, I did not click on that. It's cool now. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not apocalypse, actually. I was thinking apocalypse in my head. It's meant to be still uh, date and still date. So that's why right, date. Then in that date, I get sales date. So date, sales date. Then come and put in your format. Put in your format. Which is going to be month. The triple M. Let's make four and press enter. No, oh, to push back and forth. Press enter. Okay, press enter. I get my mods. Then new color again. I want to get the day. Day. Um, format. Format uh, is going to be consistent. Dates, then sales dates, which I'm going to be using. And the format is going to be D, D, D. First, I'll get an enter. Get the days. You can also get quarter. Okay. And get quarters quarter one. Let's see. How much? Dates. There's dates, comma. And in this place, put Q, Q, Q.
Es just por tal momento, I get quota, then this is quota. Then this is the quota function. I say sales, this, first bracket. It's going to give us um, uh, so we are in just one quota, which is Still in one, you know, it's one, two, three, uh, January, February, but it's still in one quarter. So we have one, one, one, one, one. So we can pass in a text that we want to put in there. We can pass in a text that should be on it too. So Q, I'll see one. Um, Let's just be passing this with this. But I can still use if so I'll put in my if here if function. Another way to do that. Um, so let's just if function here. Let's say if this here is equals to first because it's always equals to one, put in equals to one, no, no, comma. Put in QTR. What that? What that one? So I can use if if I have more, put in more. But I just have one, so I'm going to put in one. Press enter. I'm going to get what I want. And all that from there. So quarter one, quarter one. There's another way to pass it in, but I don't remember the this one particular way. Remember the syntax. If you put in your QTR here, huh? you can just put in QTR and you have the function there and this table. You can also use if to do it too. So put in your if and then see if that's how you get your quarter there too. So but we just have one quarter, so we can just use just one. But if you have up to like the full quota, I just use an extended if to do the remaining ones to do everything. It's just to like, I think we have two, three. So that's for the quota. If you want to get the quota. So we got in the. So let me repeat the quota again. I think that was the last thing I just talked about. So quota is just as your normal function when you have your. Your day, when you have day and all that, the normal ones, you just use the quarter function, function called quarter. I've not talked about that before. I also use that to get your quarter. So, put in the name you want. So, what we want to get is the quarter. Put in, we're just going to put in short form QRC. Okay. 
mistake. So they're putting the function, which is going to be quarter and dates that I'm removing the quarter from, so which is going to be my dates. And in dates, going to be in my dates table, is going to be a um, sales table, sales dates. I close my bracket and then which is this date I have here. I want to get my business. I have just one quarter day. So with this, I just, she's giving me one. I have two, three, but because I want to pass it in as a text, I can use my if. I use my if. And put in my comma if yes. If this is equals to, sorry, put it, put it in equals to, equals to, equals to. Have to close this bracket. It goes to one. Close the comma. Then, if this is equal to one, if that function is equal to one. Give us Q R T one. So, if you have like two, you can say else Q R T two. Else, I leave the else blank. Else, leave blank. But because if you have okay, like I can do if I because I I have I, can, I get like three or four quarters, three quarters. If I have like three quarters that in my in that my days I can put it three times. So the next I put my use my next step if the next one put another if again and do the next one if it's equals to two quarter two if it's equals to three quarter three. Okay. So I'm going to put in else just put it blank enter. So because everything there is one, I'll get put a one uh, QRT one, that's put a one, QRT one, QRT one throughout every listing I have there. Please do you understand this. From the beginning, the select column, which is to get a new table. So get when I bring in the new table now, I count. So when I bring in the new table. I'm going to create other functions, which is my year, month, name, and day, then my quarter. That's basically what I did. So please, do we understand that? And if I'm in select column, okay, means you understand. Who else? Okay. Who else? Please, who does not understand? If you understand, if I miss baby, so that do you understand? Six to you here with us. Ah, she's here. It's going to be so loud. Okay. So, he said, no. Okay. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to repeat it. I just want questions. So, let me answer questions. I'm going to repeat it before closing because I'm going to start to repeat everything. So, please, if you have a question about anything from anywhere, just ask a question. So that I can answer you any question you have. I'm, I'm going to repeat this one. So I want. Any question, any question about any other thing, not just this one. Any question? Any question? Is there no question? Is this, I don't think it's even this one. Is that paper is still here? Any question? Any question? Okay, that's a general question. I'm going to repeat that for repeat this from this picture. I have not understood anything in this program. Have you been coming to the class? Okay, I'll do that. Sorry. I'll go back a bit. I'll go through everything then. Have you been joining? Have you been joining the class, Miss Black uh, and Yes, you can understand. I have some videos that I have not completed. I'm going to complete everything that is there. I think I have some of them I have actually uploaded it, uploaded them, but I've not like it's not been selected, it has not been listed there. So I'm just gonna check through them. The ones that have not been listed, so I got some complaints that some videos is not there. So the only videos that I have not actually recorded, that is not there yet, is the last thing we're gonna talk, talk about in Barbie. So if I have uploaded them, I just need to check if it's so. Okay, I just got another laptop, so I'm trying to install. So, okay, so I'll send you the link for you to be able to install it probably I can start uh, trying to do it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the only thing I know is the last, the last um, this is which is for how to publish and how to create a Power BI service account, which is the last thing we are going to talk about. So I'm going to do that tomorrow and check out all the other ones that we have some complaints about. You can go through the videos. So if you have any questions, you don't be joining the class. You can chat me up with something I have to go on Zoom to show you. I'll show you that for Mr. Kavi. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go go through. Yeah, watch the videos. If you have any, just watch the videos. If you have anywhere you are stuck, anywhere you don't understand clearly, you can always get back to me anytime. Just message me or call me out. Respond and answer your questions. So for the people that have not been joining us, and if you don't have the, the past, the last classes we've done, message me. I will send you the videos on YouTube, and I'll just send you the link to the video so I can also go through. If you don't have all those, the first or the last second classes we did on Power I can message. Okay, so let me redo this. I'm gonna redo the dates uh, table from the beginning. Okay, so so remember the the new table function, the new table uh, measure part is basically to create a new table for us okay, using an expression. Okay, so it's creating a new table for us using an expression. So it's basically what we want to do is we want to extract dates from this our uh, apocalypse sales table and create a, a date table on its own. So I'm going to click on. Let me go back. So I'm going to click on click on my apocalypse sales. So I, I see my new table. If you go up there where you have your new measure, you now that you see new table, they click on the new table. It takes you to a new table. And they're going to ask you the first thing I'm going to ask is oh, click twice. So I click twice. Let me go back. New table. New table, then put in my um the table name. So the table name I'm going to create is dates i'm gonna create a date table my date table then i will put in my uh select column because that's what i'm going to use to select uh another column from another table so i want to select a column from my apocalypse table, which is the date table so i select column click on my select column function then they're going to ask me the table i want to select the column from so the table i want to select the column from is my apocalypse sales table and comma they're going to ask me the column name for that for the in the column name I'm not, of the this thing I want to bring it from this is apocalypse sales. So the column name of the column I want to bring it from apocalypse sales is going to be sales date. So put it in a quote sign, double quote signs. Put it in that sales date, sales date. Then um then. The expression is on that the expression means which what I should put in the table I want to bring it. So that table I want to bring in is apocalypse dead purchase. So that put after putting it in, I put in my close my bracket and press enter. Close my bracket and press enter. And then And then now I want to get my year. I want to insert my year from this my sales table. I want to insert my year, my month, my day, and my and quarter. So I'm going to create a new column for the year. New column for the year. So put in the column name, which is year. Then the function I'm using is going to be my year function. Year function, press enter. Then the date I want to use is my. Date table sales. Oh, this my sales is incorrect. I put I use S there. I'm gonna change it. Sales date. Yes, yes, date. Sales date. Press enter. I'll get my year date. So let me rename this. I'm gonna rename this to put A there instead of S. It's also gonna it's also gonna update in the function here. Okay, it's also gonna update here. So the next one I wanna create is new column. I wanna create the month 
I work at the in my year. So we're not quick. So all this, if you have another year, not just 2022, you're going to also see it there. Um, so I want to get my month, so month's name. Month name function, I, month name I already did before. The same thing I did before. My format, and you want to use the format, use the format to get input in, you put the date, because that's the name of the column, the name of the table. Then we have, we have the, so let me put in date first. That's the table. Then, sales date, sales date. So it's in here. So comma, then the format I want it to be in is, because it's months, put in four M's, close my brackets and enter. So I get my months there. Then I can also get the, New column the same way using my format. So if they this this will be formats, then in format I want to use my sales sales column, sales data data column. Then put my comma, which format because it's day. I'm going to use my D four times to get the full format and put my brackets and enter for the day. Okay, Mr. Sunday, please go ahead and unmute. Mr. Sunday, please. I cannot hear you. Your your voice is very very low. Okay, hold on, sir. I said as regards the month. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but it's still low, sir. But I can hear you a bit. Okay, I said as regards the month. I'm having an issue because the screen is error. Uh, once I insert the what's it called? Uh, I can I can no longer hear you. It's like your listening is far from me. I don't know. It seems like it's far from me or something. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Very clear. Okay. Now. Mm -hmm. now, I said once I insert the, uh, what's it called, the instruction mm -hmm. for the month, mm -hmm. it's not, it's ringing error. So I don't know what is wrong. Uh, just like I'm following you the way you have inside and putting it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's my own power BI that is having issue. It's, it's just ringing error. Okay. Now, example. now okay, so you did now if you remember that you're in, in the in a new table, you're no longer in apocalypse system. I know. So I guess in I've done that, I've done that. I've okay. done the sales date, I've done that, I've done the year. It's the month I want to do because I'm following you as you are doing it. So it's now okay. generating error. Uh-uh. Are you using your system to connect? No, no, no. I don't no, really no. understand why it's giving you error. I'm system. using my phone. Ah. Okay, don't worry. Don't maybe I'll I'll I'll, I'll try and I'll try and unravel it. If I'm not, I'll message you. Yeah, because I I'm not really see the error that you did there until I see it. Because if you're yeah. following me, it should okay. give you the same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so uh then the new column is going to be for quarter. New column is going to be for quarter. So I'm going to put quarter here. Yeah. Quarters. Not just because I'm going to So quarter is going to use, use the quarter function. And put in my dates. Sales. Dates. Close bracket and enter. So I'll get the quarters, it's going to give me numbers. I use my if to pass in my this thing there. So I say if so if this quarter is equals to one, comma, then if it's yes, if true, give me Q 
QRT1. So else, I leave else empty because I only have a uh, uh, one. If I have one, uh, if I have up to like two quarters, I will use uh, QRT1 and or QRT2. So if I have like three, up to three quarters, I will, I will now use nested list. So I just leave this empty because I have just one quarter there. Press enter. So I'll get QRT1. We have the you get QR to one throughout. And that's that that's like you just created your date table. So this date table is very important. I'm gonna show you um the importance of what you can you can use it to dig down, dig down in a, like a a um what is it called? a data. You can use it to filter to so if you that to to months to see what you see the day and that will be in your that's in our visual so that's when we go to visualization show you that why you need a full date table. Okay, so do we understand Miss Miss Gemisola? Do you understand it now? Miss Gemisola, do you understand now? Uh, is there anybody? Okay, Mr. Christopher, I understand. Hope every other person understands. Mr. Christopher, do you understand? Mr. Victor's. Uh, it's just, yeah. Please, if you don't understand, you can just say you don't understand so that. Can you still hear me, Mr. Christopher? Okay, so if you want to be doing service, you should just let me know. I would um, help you out. Okay, so um, you mean you can hear me? Okay, yeah, that's what it's saying. Okay, so um, that's that. So I'm going to. If is there any other question? Any question before I start to call the class to? And then I'm going to drop assignments while dropping the video. So please, the assignment, I don't want pictures this time. I want the Power BI file. So this is why I want the Power BI file. Is I want you to add a message explaining what each and every one of the functions. Let's say, just take me as a newbie that I don't understand anything about your, your data. So I guess me. Put in a, a comment telling me about what each and every one of the functions are useful. So I want you to submit the Power BI file for me. So the link I'm going to give you is going to be, I need the file the file submitted. So I'm going to type the assignment and I'm going to drop it in the group. If I type it and you don't understand anything about the assignment, because some people say that they don't understand, that's why they didn't do the assignment. They don't understand the text I drop. If you don't understand anything about the text, just message me and I will explain more on the assignment I'm giving, on what I wrote there. So I'm going to drop the assignment in the group while dropping the video. Can we, with this now, can we do the class on Monday? Or should I give you more time to be able to practice more and please let's talk about that. I don't want to can we can we still do the class on Monday? Or should I give more time? You can do the class on Monday, right? Okay, Mr. Favor, please on. Yes, Monday, okay. I was thinking of giving more time because I know that I don't know. know. I can hear you. I can hear you, Mr. Mr. Fibo. Okay. Uh, sorry, you know, I actually attended this class from from from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But I've been suffering from re entering this class That's you know, for I think for over 45 minutes or one hour now oh, sorry let's sorry. go back i think i'll believe that he will send the the video on on time i'll, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it okay. you know i've never seen this kind of thing before either it, it, it just really the network right? okay it's very very yeah. even the network your voice is breaking but i understand what you're talking about no words 
So, I'm going to drop the video. I'm going to try to drop the video. I'm, I'm able to try the video on time because tomorrow is Sunday. Mr. Fever, don't worry, I will drop the I'll, I'll, I'll, yeah. So I think now I don't even know. Uh, after after the revolution that you that you okay. No, just go to the video and uh and just any if you have any issue, just let me know. Sorry about the network. Okay, so Miss Mims, uh, uh, Miss, uh, we can do the class on Monday bits. You submit the submit this uh, submission of assignments here. No, I please. I need that. See, this the reason why I said we should. Um, okay, Miss, you can unmute, Mister Mister. You can unmute. Um, I'm saying that we can do the class on Monday. I'm thinking if it's possible uh, for the assignment, maybe you should give it uh, till Friday, something thereabout. So the, the reason, reason being that, can I say something? Yeah, there are some of us, we don't uh, do it when you're working, like myself. After the class, I need to sit down with the video, then I practicalize and, you know, because you're saying that, um, I can say Monday is a very short yeah, I get it. Yeah, I understand. Exactly. I understand. I understand. So the reason why I want us to actually shift the class to Saturday is because we are moving into another a new topic, not still dark again. We are going into visualization. Okay. So I'm going to be giving you another assignment. So I feel like if you are taking it to that, like, it's going to be. So I just feel like Saturday is is still nice. Within that time, you should be able to cover the videos and do the assignments and submit, and then we do the class on Saturday. Is that okay? Or I just I just feel like that is better, so that we like understand the distance very well before moving on. So I want to give the assignment. I want to give on this. You said you see it when I drop the assignment there. It's not just small. You need to actually practice what you do and all for you. So I even need to know that you understand this before I move into another one. So you need to really do the assignments. I agree with you. okay. So please let's just do it on one day. If you, if anybody here feels he has done his own assignment, you can submit and you, the videos that on the visualization are there, you go through it. If it's not even there, I'll check through it. I think it's there. I already uploaded it, but maybe it's not selected into there. But if it's not selected, I'll go through it. I'll go there and try to, to um add it there because I've already recorded the video. So I'll add it there. So after doing the assignment, you can also go through the visualization video so that it will be easier for us to, for us that is going to be entering the class, so you will not be lost in some particular areas. So go through the videos and we have a class on Saturday. So if you are watching the video and you have any way to ask a question, feel free, you can call me and ask a question, even with us having not, talked about that you can still call me or message me and ask a question on need even the visualization so just let's shift the class to saturday so that the assignment can be done and be and submitted before that time so please everybody should everybody in this class and every, i think i will drop it in the group everybody needs to do the assignment please i'm gonna bring out i'm gonna like bring in a sheet of people that did the assignments i'm gonna take my time to do that and people that did not do the assignment please everybody should do the assignment please everybody okay so so in terms of any other question I'd like to call the class to an end see you guys on saturday so i'm gonna drop it i'm gonna try and drop the video latest it will come is on monday morning i'll try to edit it tomorrow when i get back from church to upload it so latest it will come is monday morning you will get it so okay good night everyone see you guys yeah, thank you. See you guys on Saturday. Good night.